They're armed. They're dangerous. They're out of control. Tonight on Dispatches, the violent world of teenage gangs. The stereotype of a typical gang member is a gun-toting, drugs-dealing, African-Caribbean high on drugs and rap music. I was about to discover that the truth is very different and much more disturbing. I mean, even now, even after what's happened, I don't go out unless there's more than about five, six people with me, at least. And at least know that I'm getting home safely. Yep, safe, straight down. You wouldn't normally associate gangs with the quiet suburbs of Surrey. But in the last year, there have been several stabbings and numerous robberies linked to youth gangs in the area. And two years ago, Philip Donovan's 18-year-old brother, Christopher, was murdered here. I mean, uh, even in nice suburbs like this, you, can, you, you always get violence. Philip and Christopher were walking to a friend's house in the early hours of the morning when a group of around 12 youths approached them. Most were 15 and 16 years old. We didn't know anything about it, and the group just split into two. And we started walking through the group. And uh, that's when I just felt a punch in my nose. And my whole nose had just come out of joint by this point, and there was just blood all over my shirt. Uh, my immediate reaction was to click it back in place. And when I'd done it, I just dropped to the floor. Just, I, I don't know what I'd done. I must have stunned myself or something. but. At this point, there was about two or three people on me kicking me uh, from different angles. And um, next thing I remember, I just woke up, I was facing the main road just here, and um, I saw a brother in the middle of the road, and just a car just came up on the hill and just hit him and dragged him about 10, 15 feet. That's Christopher. So that was Christopher. Yeah, he was. That's Christopher on the right. The older of the two. <laughs> what was he like? He was a happy child, always smiling. I was looking out for his brother. Um, you know, you have to live with the anger of it because it's just, you can't comprehend how anybody could do such a thing, was he? To anybody, you yeah. So I guess you're just left with it, aren't you? Mm. You're left with it. Quite a few teenagers in the area had been bothered by this gang before. But nobody reported them, did they? And after Christopher died, they started saying, hey, I was attacked by that gang in the street. I was pushed around by that gang. I was shoved in a dustbin by that gang. But they never said anything before. Fear. They were scared. I asked them why. Why didn't you say something? Why didn't somebody stop this? And they said, you know, we were, we were too scared, you know? Stephen Andrews, then aged 20, was the oldest of the three youths convicted of Christopher's murder. The others were teenagers. Ryan Seymour, then aged 15, and another 15-year-old who can't be named for legal reasons. Christopher's parents knew very little about the gang, or why they targeted their son. So I went to visit the housing estate where the youths who killed Christopher lived. It turned out that the gang was called PTS and that they were well known locally. Hey there. Hey, Hello, baby. Several of the residents I met knew Christopher's attackers. I heard a, a few of the guys who actually did that committed that murder was from around here. That was one of my mates, but um, Stephen Andrews. Yeah. He, he used to, he used to, that was terrible. There, were, there was two young ones. I had something to prove, and they was with an older one. And the older one was not even with them. He was across the road walking with the girls. Yeah. Right. The two younger ones, I've got something to prove. I suppose they've been beaten up in, 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 in their time, and they wanted to go and give something. But I see two young boys doing nothing, and they walked over there and, like, and started to fight with them. Yeah. Being like, the reality was, the two guys who, um, who got done, one, the one who got murdered, he was innocent. He was mind, he was mind his own business, though. He was, yes. just, he was just walking home. Totally right. I'll make you, I mean, I'll make you right. It, it was totally out of order, but like I say, it's mainly the young ones because they've always got the same thing. PTS, they was. PTS. PTS. And what was PTS stand for? Pilling thugs. Are you PTS? Who's asking? I'm asking. These <laughs> <laughs> things asking. I'm asking. You think I'm a ventriloquist? He is. He is. The boy admitted to being a member of PTS 
and that most of the youths who'd attacked Christopher had also been in the gang. How long has PTS been around? Two and a half years. How many of you guys are there, PTS? 150. 150. 150. <laughs> and what sort, of, what sort of stuff do you generally get up to? Smoking cannabis. Yeah. They do. I don't. <laughs> the boy told me that PTS members regularly got into fights with other youths to gain a reputation. Weren't you guys aware that sort of like, you know, this sort of like violence could cause someone's death eventually? Don't really think about it until it happens. And then you realise what you've done. And then, you know. What would have happened if it would have been one of you lot? I'd go around and kill him. I found out that one of the youths convicted of killing Christopher had been a member of WK, the largest gang in the area. Their territory is New Malden, a couple of miles down the road. I headed for the housing estate where I was told most of the gang members lived. I found several in a nearby shopping parade with their leader and founder, 22-year-old Danny. Street name, Taba. Yeah, these are few of them. There's like 200. 200 strong units. You know what I mean? There's a 200 strong units. That's almost frightening. Do you know what I mean? What makes you all walk in a crew? What makes you all drink beer? Do you know what I mean? I come up here and I see, well, no, I see two big bottles of cider. Yeah. No, Only really from, you know what I mean? Yeah. It could be more than that. Yeah, there's nothing for people of our age to really do. Unless yeah. there's music. That's the only thing that can bring people out of so what, so the life that we live. Because, you know what I'm saying, most of us, certainly, not, half of us ain't got qualifications and rare. And from when you're in that position, what are you going to do? You're either going to be making a music scene or end up in prison. Most of us have been enjoying that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, hold on, so tell me something then. How do you guys make your money? Which, which is robberies, whatever, whatever your thing is, whatever you get into, that's you, innit? Yeah. Some people go straight and get a job, like, fair play I mean, to them. I, I, I see my mum shoplifting and all that, and my family. And then I just took it from there, and I've been doing that since I was nine years old. I need some more of you boys over here. Yeah. How did this gang start? Well, I was in the police station, and I'm um, just sitting there, really, and then I just thought, WK, who cares? What do you mean you're sitting in a police station? Because I got arrested, and like, I was just pissed off. I've been in there for hours, and like, that was it. I just thought, WK, come out. I must have been about 13 or 14 yeah, at the time. Been. And then that was it. We started writing it everywhere. Yeah, who, cares, who cares? Man? Who cares? <laughs> like it could have been WC, but obviously on a grass sense, he kept it a K just to. WK began as a small group of teenagers writing graffiti. They've now progressed to street robbery, and even more violent offences. Yeah, there's been stabbings. People have been sent away for stabbings down New Malden High Street. Um, a few, a few stabbings. Gang members often get into fights because they're challenged to defend their reputation and their territory. Two boys following me out behind me, and they went, oh, are you W K? I went, yes. They tried jumping me, so knocked, knocked them both out. Have any of your guys been stabbed? And I went for that yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, boys have been stabbed in our crew a couple of times now. Just see the windows underneath the third balcony. Yeah. One, two, three. And what, you jumped from there? Yeah. Why? On the other side, because Keys had a shotgun to my head. I mean, they beat me till my head split, and then I jumped off the balcony and I broke my arm and leg. You know what I mean? And I, it could have easily been a death that night. I don't know what was going to happen. I had to get out of there. It's, 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 it's got to be, it's Danny had a shotgun put to his head because one of his boys had seriously injured a rival gang member. They were following the rules of the streets. Upping the stakes. close up, then I'm going to stab you, son. I'll leave you bleeding on the floor with a punctured lung. But even when your life's in danger, you don't call the police. You take revenge or take your chances. The police came because of the incident, but I wouldn't report it to them. I wouldn't tell them what happened. Or they ain't really interested in it. They wouldn't have done nothing. And at the same time, I don't. If it had killed me, it had killed me. You know what I mean? I would have been dead. What if they come back for you? That's the chance I got to take, innit? Danny started WK more than eight years ago. The gang now has two generations of members. Many of the children living on the estate belong to the gang. The youngest recruit is only 10 years old. This 15-year-old has been a member of WK since he was eight. We can't show his face for legal reasons. Like most of the youths I met, he thinks of the gang as family. I'm not never going to leave the gang because they're my people. Because we're, we're, we're part of a crew, there's, there's loads of us. If one person, you're going to with the rest of them. He said he'd been involved in many fights, 
Like most gang members with a reputation to defend, it takes very little provocation to start one. Cuss my aunt. That's beef. I don't know, there's a number of things, you know. Jack of credit, probably. Looking at me. Looking at you? Mm. What, like what? In a bad way. What, and that could create a big problem? Yeah, of course, if they're looking at me, they're, they're obviously thinking I'm a dickhead. Dumb. Is that a serious I'm thing? I'm a Of course it is. Imagine like so, someone thought that you was a prick. You'd be offended over there, innit? It's comfort, like, He said he'd first been arrested by the police at the age of nine. Like most gang members, his crimes have got more frequent and more violent. What's the, what's the worst thing you've been arrested for? Attempted murder. You got done for attempted murder? You was arrested for attempted murder? Yeah. How old are you now? What, 13? 13? What happened there? Someone got maliciously stabbed, didn't it? Don't you think that someone's eventually going to be killed? Either by you guys or one of you guys is going to be killed? Yeah, I would have thought so. That's the way what life runs. Is it? But that's the way I see life. A few weeks after we filmed with the gang, I got news that made me return to the estate. I got a call uh, that there was a fight last night. People have been stabbed and I've heard that they were in quite a bad, bad state. The person who called me said one of the guy's intestines was hanging out and he was running with them in his hands. So I'm coming now to find a couple of the gang members. We'll see if I can find a couple of the gang members and see if any of them will talk to me about what happened the other night. I found Danny at home. Shall we say, Tubbs? I heard... Listen, man, I heard that um, something happened yesterday, man, and it's just madness, you get me? I mean, what's happening up there? But then I don't really know nothing that happened, and that's it. I don't really know what went on, and that's it. Yeah, but there's some, some, something's going on in, you get me? You know what I mean? I later found out that Danny wasn't involved in the incident. If he knew anything, he certainly wasn't going to talk about it. The incident involved a street fight between gangs of youths. Several people were stabbed and very seriously injured. A large number of youths, mainly aged between 15 and 17, have since been arrested by the police. The Home Office have no idea how many youths each year are seriously harmed by members of gangs. In local newspaper reports, I came across 15 cases of teenagers who'd been killed in group or gang-related incidents in the last three years, and many scores of cases in which youths had been seriously injured in the last six months alone. According to the government, we don't have a serious gang problem in Britain. Yet when over 1,000 children were recently asked by the charity Crime Stoppers who they fear most, teenage gangs came top of the list. I was about to find out why youth gang violence is common, yet hidden from the authorities. Just give me the lights and pass the job. I visited 10 London boroughs and found youth gangs in all of them each with their own territories and rivalries. In Greenwich, South East London, I uncovered a pattern that's typical throughout Britain. The Ferrier is one of the largest housing estates in the borough. The youths who live here exist in the world that is hidden from most adults, one with its own codes and its own system of justice. 17-year-old Philip introduced me to the estate. This, is, um, this bit here, this is Ferrier. Like the main bit is all the way down there. Like you have to go all the way down there. Like they don't have nothing on the ferry, like that's why everyone sprays graffiti on the walls, and that's why everyone like all steals cars and stuff like that. Philip, yeah. you were just telling me that they don't, don't have any sort of like recreational facilities. What's this, Asher Turf? Yeah, this is the only thing they got now. It just only starts at seven o'clock, yeah, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. But this finishes at nine, but nine o'clock ain't really like time to go sleep. After this, yeah, that's when people start doing like madness. Philip told me there were several rival gangs in the Greenwich area, and the same in neighbouring boroughs. A friend of his had recently been attacked by a gang of around 30 youths who'd come to the estate armed in machetes. He took me to meet Nicky. Hi. Hello. Nicky there. Just got stabbed in the back of the leg, chopped. 
apparently um, my head 11 stitches cracked arm my friend got attacked worse than me he got his arm literally like almost cut off chop, chopped off yeah he had like, 11 stitches just back, back there a chopper thrown at his leg right inside of his leg yeah and in a way i'm lucky i come back just this and 17 year old nicky is not a gang member the gang were after his friend who'd had an argument with them a few days earlier although both nicky and his friend could identify their attackers no one's been prosecuted what did the police do i haven't seen the police police haven't seen what me. Police hold, on. Seen me. You, hold on you got you got chopped in the head mm. you've got that. chopped on you've, got, you've been stabbed mm. you've been chopped in the head what happened you just went to the hospital it's the hospital there's no there's been no no police report no why I, mean, for, I told the police I don't want to get them involved. Like at the hospital, I said to the doctor, um, I don't want no police involved because I don't like police. I feel like that. Is that the code of the streets? You saying? Yeah. Keep it rolling, like. Nikki's mother is all too aware of that code of silence and what may happen if she breaks it. If you go to the police and you, 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 it's grassing. I would not have a house. I would never son. I would never daughter. I wouldn't have anything. That's it. That's the code of this estate and probably lots of other estates, not just this one. There's loads of estates like this. Nine o'clock, don't go out. Not on this estate anyway. The kids have changed to have. It's like the Bronx. It is. That's how I feel. It used to be like fight with your fists but then then it went to bowls then it's gone to knives it's got nunchucks uh, bars bits of wood and guns now not grasping through the police is just one of the unwritten laws for youths living on this estate backing up your mates is another we always stick up for each other no matter what it's all for one and one for all isn't it boys once one gets out everyone else helps if you have way round, so way round. do it to me, so I'm going to do it back to them, really. That's why I look here. If someone stabs you, you shoot them. It's, yeah. one, it's one worse, isn't it? One better, Yeah. If someone beats you up with a bat, you beat him up with something else, a metal pole. Yeah. Because it's one worse. You've always got to go one better than them, innit? And if like five of them beat you up, then ten of you beat them up. Then it just shows that you can do worse. <laughs> there are several youth gangs on the Ferrier estate. They seldom fight with each other. It's youth from other areas who are the danger. This gang are a group of friends who grew up together. Like many, they formed a gang for protection. If anyone comes looking for trouble, they've got backup. But what counts as looking for trouble can be very little. Just looking at someone, known as screwing, can be enough to start a fight. If someone screwed us in the street, they're looking at you like it's a mad way here, then that's when everyone just starts reacting. So what? Hold on. So you'd you'd actually you'd, you'd actually respond in a in a violent yeah, way they have to, they just because like just that, because of the way someone looks at you. Yeah. Yeah. They they won't look at you like in a dirty way. They challenge you. The standard. Yeah. It's like you got to live. Quite a bit of tea for a dickhead, isn't it? Yeah. The gangs around here can turn up in force without much fear of being caught. I heard about a large gang attack that happened at the youth centre just up the road from the estate. It ain't healthy, I'm a paranoid, tell me the truth I'm out the window with my AK, ready to shoot Ran out of injury on my mom, can't take the stress None of the youths I'd met were willing to talk about the incident for fear of reprisals The centre's manager, Joy Chapman, was there on the night it happened Paul was hired by the mother for a 16-year-old girl um, The party then became common knowledge and when a group of Somalian boys came. We told them that they couldn't come in because it was invitation only. And they decided that I was being racist and they were going to try and come in. And I came back about eight years old. I was trying to keep them out the front. They put this on me. They came with a knife. Um, they had knives, they had weapons, poles. They trashed this room through about the stereo equipment. They just, they were just awful. They came running through there. They attacked all the people right through here. They were just attacking people all the way up, trying to let the people in the front door that I was trying to keep out. 
The building was wrecked and two people were slashed with knives. There were over 100 witnesses, but only Joy gave evidence to the police. The girls and the adults that were here on the day of the assault were too scared for themselves and for their families to report it. So I reported it as the manager of the building. They found out where I lived, stoned my house, wrote graffiti outside my house, verbally abused my daughter, myself, my sons, um, and continue to do so. So I know from personal experience why people don't report stuff to the police and the council. The youths who carried out the attack were Somalis, known locally as the Woolwich Boys, because Woolwich is their territory. Some youths I met in the street invited me to the youth club. No one I spoke to here admitted to being involved in the attack at Joy Centre. They told me they had first formed the gang to protect themselves from racist attacks. But now they find themselves fighting with other gangs in the area. Many said they'd been beaten, several had been stabbed and even shot at. We can't go out this sort of the borough of Greenwich without getting picked, like sort of getting into beef with other areas. We'd rather say for example Lewisham or Catford though we can't move out of the SEA in sort of Greenwich borough. You can't move out of the borough? Yeah. Why? I mean what sort of what sort of problems will you get into? You say Lewisham? We'll say we we'll get jumped or by, by the people in that area. The black people in that what, area. Gangs? Gangs, yeah. Basically, just gang food. So they don't. They think we're intimidating them. Things. What sort of gangs? What, um, do you know the names of any of these gangs? Oh, like they call themselves Ghetto Boys and Broccoli Boys and stuff like that. The Woolwich Boys have a fearsome reputation, partly because of the large numbers of youth they can call on to fight alongside them, if necessary. We're all like that. We're like that. No one can, I can't say no one can't do us nothing, but if we, when we're together, we're organised, we know what we're doing. You've got actually a small army, quite a small army. About how many, about, how, about, how, about how many people would you say you've got collectively? What? Over a hundred at least. No, about, more than, about two, three hundred. Big, if we were to go to war, we'd go to war. But uh, it's just a couple of phone calls and everyone's united. The Woolwich Boys have been fighting their rivals, the Ghetto Boys, for the last five years. Ghetto Boys' territory is in Lewisham. I met up with a group of them in a shopping centre off the high street. The Ghetto Boys have several factions in the borough, totalling more than a hundred members. Many are still at school. Reputation is everything to the gang. Beef every day. Beef every day. Beef every day. Maybe there's going to be beef today. <laughs> no, today. Every, today, tomorrow. Don't matter where you're from, Lucian, brother, Southern, brother. Everything, pride is everything, you get Where'd me? That's what it's all about. Number. Pride. That's why there's so much beef, because the beef that we're better than them, they think they're better than us. So we've got to prove to each other. It's not even a beef team, because we're the better crew. They're just hating on us. That's yeah. all. It's not even a beef team. At one time, at one time. We're not even worrying about what we're doing. time, these people, they've ridden up and down in these last two minutes about 10 times. I'm not with them, please, man. I don't like them. If I got robbed or something, if I got stabbed up and everything, I wouldn't go to the police. You know what I'm saying now, yeah? I have banged up so many fellas, yeah. I'm just bored. I'm bored now. I want something new. I want the next gang here to try and eat them like dinosaurs. The tit for tat war between the ghetto boys and the Woolwich boys affects most of the youths in the area. Often there's no choice join them or risk becoming a victim. I went to meet a youth who says he's not a gang member. He got caught up in a feud between the two rival gangs in the area. He's received numerous death threats, they know where he lives, and his mother's terrified. She has three children to protect. You've got to go through every day. Only one I'm in, I don't bother when I go out, to be honest with you. I don't knock it when I'm out, because it don't bother me if someone breaks in when I'm not here. I just don't even come in one of I leave them there because I've got to be honest, at the end of the day, it, just, they're my kids that have been here in bed. If anyone comes through my front door, this is my house. You take your chances. I mean, I'm not, 
I wouldn't say that I'd actually put it through someone's head, mm. but I think I might pick it up and wave it about a bit if I thought I was threatened. How long have you been boxing now? Since I was nine. 17-year-old Darrell's problems began because he has friends who are ghetto boys. They got into a fight with members of the Woolwich gang when he was with them. Since then, revenge attacks have escalated. They include two stabbings and a shooting. Darrell's a target and has nowhere to turn. Now, it's at the worst point because one of them got shot in his back in Plumstead. So, they're thinking now, uh, Someone's shooting at them, so I think they're going to obviously try and get a gun. But once things are rolling, you can't reverse it, it just gets worse and worse, and you just have to try and cope with it. No one can't sort out my problems except for myself. Like, my mum has tried her hardest to sort my problem, but she can't sort it out. It's only me that can sort it out. Daryl's mother has contacted everyone she can think of for help, including the police, the council, and her MP. Although her son's life is in danger, no one has come up with any solutions. You know, I'm not saying that it's all one kid's fault or it's all another group of kids' fault, because it isn't. It's just a collective thing between the ages of 16 and 19. They're killing each other, man. They're out there shooting and stabbing each other. Don't someone think that we should be sitting down and trying to work this out? But evidently not. The only advice Fiona has been given is to send Daryl away until the council can rehouse them. The family's been on the emergency waiting list since last October. The Metropolitan Police are currently conducting research into the nature and extent of youth gangs in London. This teenage gang from North London, known as the Wood Green Mob, were convicted of 17 robberies over a four-month period. They punched, kicked and even stabbed some of their victims. Most of the victims were children. Juveniles commit around half the street robberies in the capital, but the Met presently have no idea how many of these are by youth gang members. The Met accepts that there's a serious gang problem in a few inner city areas, like Brixton, where these youths were caught on camera last year with a gun in their possession. I was curious to find out whether their research, like mine, revealed a far more widespread problem. So have you identified that there's a problem with youth and gangs in London? I think we need to be really careful about youth gangs in London. Um, it is nothing like the American experience, and, and that's the starting point. The gangs that you get over here in London are not the same as the gangs that you get in some of the big American cities. They're not as organised, they're not as well entrenched, they're certainly not as violent. Crime in London is down, muggings are down, and there are fewer youth victims this year than there were last year. And the number of youth who are reporting crime is also down. Yep. But we don't know, and we can probably never know, whether that is a change in real crime or just a change in the extent to which they're reporting crime. I'm, I'm not suggesting it's not a serious problem. Mm. Please don't misunderstand that. Um, but I do come back again to the fact that we need to be a bit careful about not having a moral panic about gangs. Um, I mean, I remember the mods and the rockers. Gangs are not new in London. They're not new in the UK. Um, but I don't at the moment see the need for a gang strategy in London. I don't think the problem is serious enough to start engaging with groups as groups. Um, and I'll take some convincing of that yet. But there are many hidden casualties of the territorial wars being fought in the streets of London between youth gangs from different neighbourhoods. Hi, how are you doing? I'm Ishmael, I'm Channel 4. Channel 4, nice to meet you. When Shola moved to Greenwich, she was expecting her sons to be safe at their new school. But both 15-year-old Jude and his younger brother John were continually bullied by the same group of boys. Both suffered serious violence. You know, this was John, the first time he was punched in the eye with a swollen and red eye. And that was when he had his cheek cut and he had to be sutured. How many stitches did he receive? Six. And these are the ones, that, I took quite a lot of them actually, it's my this son. This was Jude, and he received these injuries at school. Yes. And I was really, really scared for the lives of my boys. It was after that that I wrote a letter to the school telling them to, you know, look into the case. I didn't want my son to end up like, um, 
Damlola Telo. And that was why I finished this letter with um, uh, the statement that I do not want to be called to this school to come and identify the body of m my son. No one was prosecuted for the attack in which Jude lost his front teeth. The police faced a wall of silence. Six months later, he was punched in the head outside school one lunchtime by one of the same group of youths who'd been threatening him. Hours later, Jude died at home of a brain hemorrhage. They told me he has stopped breathing. We were rushed to the hospital. They left John at home. And um, they took him into the emergency accident in emergency ward. And they started again battling with his life. They couldn't bring him back. <laughs> Shola is still asking for an inquiry into why no one took the violence Jude suffered seriously enough. She still doesn't know why her son, a quiet, non-aggressive child, was targeted. I later found out, after speaking to the ghetto boys, that the 16-year-old who killed Jude was one of their members. Jude's home was in Woolwich, but the school he attended was in Lewisham, ghetto territory. A former pupil at that school explained why this would be enough to make Jude a target. Like where Jude was from, like he lived in Woolwich. That's why it all started because where he was from, one boy was from like a certain gang from ghetto, ghetto boys from Lucian, and they like Woolwich and Lucian never ever got along. They still don't do that. The ghetto boys are always fighting with the Woolwich boys, and people get hurt, and it's just a non-stop thing. Like in like when you're in school, you you come out the school gates and you hear the ghetto but the ghetto boys will be there to like look for people from village and they'll just end up being a big fight. Is it really that violent out there? Yeah, really, yeah. And you find that you might get stabbed or killed? No. No, sometimes I, sometimes I do get, sometimes I do worry about what my, what my family will think, like burying them there their grandson or their nephew or even their, or my mum even burying me. I know it'll be hard for them, but you just got to keep an eye out, innit? You got to keep an eye open. You're only 15. Well, uh, that's what makes it so bad. The people at the age of 15 are looking to stab other people. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be getting on with each other. Enjoy your childhood while you can. I was shocked that youth had to worry about being killed in the streets and the level of unreported violence. But London's not the only city with a youth gang problem. We spoke to over 30 gangs in six areas of the country. The picture that emerged was alarming. Dispatch's researchers spoke to members of 32 youth gangs in six areas, London, Surrey, Birmingham, Essex, Derby and Leicester. They ranged in size from 10 to over 100 members and were of every ethnicity. The majority of their members were aged 15 to 17. France, they're massive. They're yeah. bring it up to the world, they're massive. All were involved in some kind of criminal activity. Several of the gangs, like this 50-strong crew on the Bronston estate in Leicester, said they mostly committed low-level crimes, like vandalism and the occasional arson. This estate's been terrorised. We're going to start blowing cars up if we don't get no go-kart tracks. The reason these youths gave for hanging around in groups and causing trouble was the same as for most of the gangs we spoke to. No, there's nothing around Bronston. That's why people go out, yeah, nicking cars, yeah, lighting fires, having fights, whatever, yeah, drinking beer. What else can you do? There's we've nothing. even got ten-year-olds on the bit. Yeah, yeah man, we've got nothing because all we've got is one aerosol. <laughs> <laughs> this gets the fires cooking. This is what you want, man. Flammable shit. We want something, yeah, to do so we don't get in trouble, really. Most gang members we spoke to around the country were crimes after joining a gang. Half the crews, like these ghetto boys in London, carried out street robberies on a regular basis. All these people on the streets here who I don't know, they're my food. They give me my paper, they're my payroll, they're like my JSA, they're, they're my job seekers allowance, you get me? That's what they are. 
However, it might not be apparent to the police that many prolific street robbers are members of large youth gangs. What sort of things did your gang get up to? Jacking people and uh, robbing people. They seldom go robbing in large groups, for reasons explained by this former gang member from Essex. Depends like twos, threes, like the more of, of you there was, like you didn't get as much money, so you do it with less people. Committing crimes in large numbers is also avoided because it attracts police attention. This gang from Peckham in London, known as the Money Makers, became a target for the police after stealing thousands of pounds worth of goods by rushing into stores in large numbers, a tactic known as steaming. 13 gang members were caught and sentenced to prison. Members of only one of the gangs in our survey admitted that their gang was involved in organized drug stealing, although many individual members did admit to sometimes selling drugs. The common denominator between all of the gangs was violence. All but one regularly got into fights. The violent crimes gang members admitted to in confidential questionnaires ranged from common assault to manslaughter. Almost two thirds of the gangs had been involved in a stabbing and four had members who had killed people. The majority of victims of the most serious violence were youth members of rival gangs in revenge attacks. We don't like hurting people, but if one of our boys get hurt, then we hurt people. Yeah. That's it. Silent uh, but violent. Silent but violent. Have one yeah. of you boys ever been hurt before? Yeah. 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 One, one of our boys. One of our boys. I just got jacked the other day. I just got robbed. I've been stabbed in my head. I've had people hit me by a car. I just got slashed today over an argument between this one. He got he bored me up a second ago, you know. Fat squad. You saw it. So forget me. So shameful. Oh, sorry. Nine of the gangs had members who'd been involved in a shooting. All of these were in the inner cities and had many teenage recruits. These 15-year-olds from Birmingham asked us not to reveal which gang they belonged to. How long have you been involved in the gang? A couple of years. What, since you were 13? Or something like that, yeah. Have you ever held a gun? Yeah. Are you, are you concerned about your own safety? Yeah, I just know I'm not going to get killed. So are you so sure? Yeah. If it happens, it happens, you get me, but, but it's life, you get me? Simple as that. It's been dubbed the most notorious housing estate in London, Stonebridge in Harlesden. But even I was shocked by the scale of the violence I'd uncovered. The truth is that most gang members in Britain aren't gun-carrying organised criminals, but ordinary teenagers who developed a casual attitude towards violence and its consequences. Ben Bowling is a Home Office consultant and expert on youth crime. I showed him our research and asked him to assess the findings. I was surprised in the research by the anxiety that gangs cause among young people, um, the extent of the problem up and down the country, across a whole wide different uh, group of age groups, all uh, the levels of violence I think in some cases are quite shocking. Uh, the levels of violence that are being admitted to by the young people and also the injuries that have been sustained and of course the numbers of people who have actually been killed. So I think, yes, this looks to me like a very serious problem. Do you believe the government recognises that there is a problem? No, I think the government is in denial. I think that they won't accept that there are gangs. They see gangs as an American phenomenon that doesn't exist in England. When I worked in the Home Office in the 1980s, the official position was we don't have gangs in England and that probably is the same today. The second issue was around resources. In order to tackle the problem of young people grouping together for protection and for excitement and for community, policing uh, and imprisonment and tougher laws, it takes resources. Some cities like Manchester have established gangs who resolve their disputes with submachine guns. Once gangs reach this stage, the violence is almost impossible to control. The Greater Manchester Police have been forced to take drastic measures. Twenty-seven people have been shot to death in Manchester and around 200 seriously wounded in gun-related incidents in the last three years. Armed police now patrol the streets. Responsibility for the use of a firearm is an individual decision. It is to be fired only as a last resort or if it is apparent that there are no other options for preventing serious injury or loss of life. 
and gang members are getting younger. This is called a Mac-10. This is effectively a, a submachine gun which is designed to fire as many bullets in as short a space of time as possible. It's not an accurate weapon, it's just designed to cause as much impact and as much damage as, as is feasibly possible. And these weapons have been used in, in crimes in Manchester. What sort of people are carrying these sort of weapons? Members of gangs tend to be young men between the age of about 17 and 24. The youngest in the last two years was actually an 11 year old. So that's an 11 year old boy who was convicted of an offence involving a firearm. So we know that we've got people as young as that involved, um, although that's pretty rare. Um, but by the time they reach age 14, there's significant representation from that age group upwards. But Manchester, unlike London, has a strategy to address its gang problem. Alongside the armed response is a focus on rehabilitation and prevention. A range of services are provided to help youths leave their gang and discourage others considered to be at risk from joining. We try to identify who we think the young people are that are going to end up either being found with a bullet in their head or a gun in their hand. It's really that simple. Is it easy to rehabilitate hardened gang members? No, it's not. It's, it's very difficult and that's why it's important that we start young. Do you believe that there's a natural progression uh, from these young teenage gangs into uh, being a fully-fledged hardened criminal? I don't think that there's been enough work done to, to, to clarify exactly what the, what, the, what the root cause of that progression is, because it, it certainly doesn't happen in every case. We judge our own success by our ability to reduce the number of gang-related shootings, fatal shootings and non-fatal shootings year on year, and that's, our, that's, that's, that's why we're here. We're not here to deal with um, youths, youth gangs that are um, involved in minor offences. Manchester's gang strategy has led to a reduction in fatal shootings. Whether it tackles the problem early enough is open to question. There is no national strategy or government guidelines for the police on how to address the youth gang problem. I set off to visit one city where the police are taking a very forward-thinking approach. Derby doesn't have any organised gun-carrying gangs, but it does have a youth gang problem. I met members of RMC near a large housing estate in Chadiston. Most of the crimes they commit are low-level ones, like vandalism. Even so, gangs like these are a policing priority. You have to spit on the floor, they will arrest you. Yeah, and if you swear? If you, if you swear, if you spit, anything like that, they just take you down the station. What? Yeah. Yeah. Derbyshire has a zero-tolerance policy to antisocial behaviour. If youths gather in large numbers, the police will disperse them. They use acceptable behaviour contracts to encourage youths to stay out of trouble. If youths breach these, they'll arrest them. In Derbyshire, gang members get special treatment. The police know who the main instigators are and they'll go to them first. And then, if, if, say like, we're the RMC, and the police know that you're in the RMC, you won't get any respect from them, they'll arrest you and they'll ask questions later, and then they'll throw whatever they can at you. But if you're just a normal person not known as like the RMC or you come down here, then you get off a bit lightly. But if they know that you come down here, you're hanging here, you're always in trouble. They know, they know your face, they know who you are. Uh, Knowing who gang members are is a key part of the crime and disorder strategy. Other agencies, like youth workers, offer a range of services aimed at deterrence. Sergeant Dave Simmons explained why tackling the youth gang problem is a priority. There is certainly some evidence that established criminal gangs do evolve from groups of young people who are friends and who hang out together on street corners and get involved in antisocial behaviour, petty crime, and, uh, and it escalates from there. The way we see it, this is the only chance we've got uh, to do something about it. Once, once gang culture is established in a neighbourhood, it seems very, very difficult to deal with it. And, and, and I'm not aware um, of too much success anywhere in the world of dislodging or getting rid of um, violent gang culture once it becomes established in communities. I think that's the thing that scares a lot of us in cities and towns like Derby that don't have a problem with uh, violent criminal gangs. If we don't get this right, we're going to end up with um, a monster that can't really be controlled. No one knows whether teenage gangs like RMC will ever escalate into organised criminals. 
but there are already some signs of escalation. It's just loads of them now. It's got bigger, got this, bigger, so called massive. So it used to be called Roosevelt 4, but now most people come down, it's quite Roosevelt massive. And there's more younger ones now. And many of the older teenage members are already involved in regular violence. It looks like you guys have been in some serious fights. <laughs> this one's Friday night. This is from fighting. <laughs> Look, I mean, all of, all of you guys' knuckles are... We love um, to fight, we do. You love to fight? Yeah. yeah. Want to fight. Well, you love to fight? Yeah. yeah. You get in these fights, it's only a matter of time before someone's stabbed or even killed. Mm. Well, Doesn't that ever cross your mind? We don't know at the time, you just yeah. want to stick up for each other. Derbyshire's strategy is new, and it remains to be seen how effective it will be. But at least they have identified that there is a problem. In many parts of the country, they haven't even started. Just as filming was coming to an end, Fiona, Daryl's mother, the boy who was being terrorized in Greenwich, asked me to come to see her. Thanks very much. I'm actually in the bedroom, I'm just packing some stuff together. Yeah. Excuse me, everything's in a bit of a mess at the minute because we're just trying to get... Is it, is it that bad? Has it got that bad? Yeah, it has actually. Yeah. yeah, I'm in here actually. If Sorry, I'm just in the middle of everything because I've got to get all this done. What exactly has happened? What's been happening? Well, basically, it's just, things are just accelerated. I mean, you know Daryl went away. He's actually working abroad, like, up north and he comes back weekends, but it's Jordan now. They pulled a gun on him last Saturday. Apparently, about 10, 15 of them, the same ones that's been giving Daryl the ape, has caught him over by the pub. And they, went, they asked him where Daryl was because we've told everyone that Daryl's gone abroad so that they'll back off. And Jordan said, oh, he's away, you know he's away. And then they just started searching through their pockets. And that's At gunpoint? Yeah. Where, where are you going to go now? I'm, going, I'm just taking my kids away. I don't want anyone to know where I'm going. I ain't even told my kids where they're going. I'm not staying here. It's not safe and no one ain't doing nothing about that. You know, if you see that boy's face when he's coming and I can't even begin to imagine what it must look like to see someone standing in front of you with a gun. It's not something I've ever had to deal with and he shouldn't have to do that. So not 14 years old. With Daryl gone, Jordan, his younger brother, had now become a target. Was that the first time you'd seen a gun? I saw one on television, but that's the first time I've ever seen one in real life, like close to me. And I got scared and I felt like she's there, like you get sharp pains in your, in your heart. That's what I felt in my chest. And then... I was scared, yeah, because they see me, then they might try something. There's three times in the past month that I've been robbed now. Do you think you'd ever get caught up in the very same cycle? I probably will. When, as I get older and their younger brothers get older, it'll just come back round. This is how the cycle continues. Until we start to address the problem, there will be many more victims and gang members. It goes, you can't win, you can't relax, can't rap about this world and how it acts. No, we can't do that because the kids might respond and gangs might react and the language that's wrong. But to blame our songs and put it all on rap music is ducking the truth bit to Nanga's every true Brit. I don't need no guns, I can slap you in my hands. So step back and watch Tab of all this dance. You know what I mean? <laughs>